Oh yeah, it is that day. It is time to talk about sewing machine needles. Are you ready? Let's get started. Well, well, welcome back everybody. I am your host, Rob Appel from Stitching Heaven, right here on YouTube. So well, super excited to see you. And we are going to talk very briefly today about sewing machine needles. And the reason we're talking briefly today is I thought I knew a bunch, but I don't know nearly as much as I thought I did, but I'm still learning and so can all of you. If you didn't hear recently, we did a really cool Zoom virtual class with my good friend, Rhonda Pierce from Schmetz Needles and Euro Notions. She came on, she spent an hour talking to us all about the workings of the sewing machine needle and how to know which was the right needle for the right project, all the different parts of the needle and how to interpret them and what you might want to be thinking about with needles. So I want to offer all of you an overview of what she is teaching us, but I am not the expert Rhonda is. So what I really want to encourage all of you, if you ever get a chance to take a needle class from Rhonda Pierce from Schmetz Needles, please do. She'll be at our expo with us. She'll hopefully be joining us again at Stitch in Heaven. Uh, so stay posted, subscribe so that you can make sure we can let you know if we're going to have her teaching these classes again. It was incredible. And I also loved having the live questions come in from all of you that were following along. So it was great to see a bunch of you out there like Jenny and Carl and Marilyn and a bunch of you that follow along. So anyways, I want to talk for all of us out there, some of the, the concepts about the needle. Real brief, I'm going to refer mostly to the Schmetz needles because that's what I've learned about, especially when it comes to the color coding. So the first thing I will encourage you to do is please visit Schmetz website. They even have a brand new app that you can put on your cell phone, which is a great needle knowledge chart. It talks about the color coding and the parts of the needle, such as the tip and the eye and the scarf on the back, the blade, the shaft, all of these parts, these names. Look at how smart I sound now. But I know most of you wander into a quilt shop, your local quilt shop, sewing machine supply shop, and there's this beautiful wall of all of these needles and there's a lot of choices. So let's think of needles. This is the way I used to teach the class is needles are like ice cream. All quilters love ice cream and needles, but we don't all prefer the same flavors. And some of us can eat more ice cream than others. I'm a three scoops. So with that being said, we can talk about flavors like chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, quilting, embroidery, sharps, uh, universal ballpoint. And we can also talk about sizes, single scoop, double scoop, triple scoop, 80, 12, 90, 14, 116. You see how it works? So let's just spend a few minutes today talking about some of these things and the, the information that's most important. So for me as a quilt maker, what I thought was most important is the tip of the needle the way it is designed, because every needle has a slightly different structure, whether it's more blunt, like a universal needle, or really, really like a missile tip, like a Microtex or a Sharps needle. Those are the same names. One of the most impressive things I learned is the tip of the needle. Rhonda had these photographs of like a thousand time magnification and you can see burrs and scratches and all of the kind of stuff on the tip of the needle in this magnification. So one of the questions that was asked is how long does a needle last? It lasts until you're hearing popping and thumping and all kinds of stuff, which could be just a couple of strokes if you're using the wrong style needle in the wrong project. So let me put that into English. I've been telling all of you for years, I love the Microtex needle, the one that's got the very, very aggressive tip, because I do a lot of quilts with applique and a lot of quilts with applique and batik, which means it's a very dense fiber. So the sharper or the more aggressive the tip, the quicker the needle can get through the weave of the fabric. That's why the needle shapes are different. So that Microtex needle gets through quickly, but because it's such a sharp tip, it will also dull quickly. And if the needle starts to dull, it will affect the fabric. It can snag the fabric. It can do all kinds of things. So that's one of the things that I learned, and I might start to use other styles of needles 
to get the eye that I want. So that's the other thing you're shopping for. The needles come with eyes that are pretty round and small or big and elongated, like a top stitch needle or an embroidery needle. Those needles have a really big eye, this part here where the thread goes through, so that you can put heavier and bigger threads in the eyes of those needles. That's what they are there for. A lot of times the flavoring system or the naming system of the needle is going to be um, pretty appropriate. It's like there's jeans denim. Guess what that's for, folks? Jeans and denim, or maybe heavy canvases or real dense fabrics, right? Because a jeans denim needle actually has a reinforced eye. So it's stronger around the outer eye of the needle, which will cause less damage inside the eye of the needle while the needle tip is trying to work its way through the fiber, right? Needles don't cut the fiber, they have to wiggle through. And so that's the job of a needle like that. We hear the term universal needle. It's got a universal eye and kind of a universal tip. It's your workhorse of needles. It's a great needle choice. I probably haven't given universal needles enough credit in the past. I know some of us out here right now, there were some comments about being on a budget. Rhonda made it sound, and I know again, a needle will only last as long as it will last, but if a universal tip is designed for a variety of projects, maybe that's a great way to help uh, elongate the use of your needle. So as you go from project to project to project, that way you're not constantly changing out your needles. I have a habit of not ever putting a needle back into a sewing machine. I'm a believer in always a fresh needle. So if I've used the needle for a little bit on a project, I might remove it and not put it in. It doesn't uh, put it back in. It doesn't mean that it's expired, but it, universal needles, maybe we can get more projects out of them. So I'm starting to look at those universal needles. The Quilting needle specifically was the one I became very interested in because it has a tip that's pretty aggressive like the Microtex. The eye isn't as big as a top stitch, so I like the way that kind of secures the thread, but it's a little bit more reinforced. It's going to last longer for the quilting and or the piecing. So those are our flavors in the needles and there's other flavors out there, right? And they're going to be, like I was starting to say, fairly specific in the branding or the labeling. So that jeans denim is for jeans and denim. The quilting needle is great for piecing and or machine quilting with. A top stitching needle if you're doing top stitching, big thread. So the naming system is pretty cool that way. And if you visit the website, again, they have a color chart that will tell you on the top of the needle, there are two bands of color, generally speaking. One is the kind of needle that it is, and the other is gonna to refer to the size of needle that it is. And this is probably the biggest question, especially for our new sewers and quilters out there. There is a lot of information on the package, and let's just talk about the information that we don't usually look at first. On this package, it says 130-705, and this particular one says H and M. Now, we learned what a lot of that meant in the quilting needle class or the needle class with Rhonda, but I just want to tell you that this 130-705 is basically your standard home sewing machine flat back needle, okay? It's kind of the needle you're all shopping for. So that number isn't... Um, it's something that you want to know, but it's not the number you're really going to ask about. This number, number here, 8012 or 7511 or 9014. Those are the numbers that seem to throw out the most confusion. So first of all, what you're really looking at is two different numbering systems, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, or 11, 12, 14, 16, 18. Those are two different numbering systems, but they always match up. So you're always going to hear 80, 12, 90, 14, 100, and 100 slash 16. You're not going to hear us say, use an 80 slash 16. Those don't exist because the 80 means 12. So if somebody says grab a size 12, they also mean grab a size 80. Okay, so that's the way the sizing numbers pair up. Needles, the bigger the number, the bigger the effect. So as a needle gets larger, the opening of the eye will get larger, easier to thread, easier to see, but it also means it's going to leave her a larger hole. So a size 100 needle is larger than a size 80 needle. Therefore, the eye will be larger proportionately, but the different flavors of needles, whether that's that sharp with the small hole or the top stitch with the big oval, 
those are gonna, like I said, change proportionately. So you'll still have a sharp needle at a size 100 with a bigger hole, but it'll be a hole. And that top stitch with a size 100 will have a big, big oval, but it'll still be an oval. I hope that makes some sense. So part of what you're dealing with when you're shopping for needles is how to get the tip through the fiber and then how to run the thread through the eye of the needle. So sometimes that sizing is based on do I need a larger needle like a 90 or a 100 to be strong enough to work through those dense textiles I'm working with? Or am I choosing that size 90 or that size 100 because maybe I want to use a much larger thread system? Brief side note, if you're not aware, thread systems work opposite. The larger the number, the finer the thread. So it's kind of hard to say these threads always match up with these threads, and it's also based on the twist and the weave of the thread and how they run smoothly through the eye of the needle. But that's what you're shopping for when you're shopping for size. You're looking for a heavier, bigger needle in case you need it to get through that heavier, thicker, denser fabric, or if you want to run the heavier threads through it, you would be going to a larger number on your needle. That 80 will go to a 90 or a 100 or a 110 as you go up. So that's that numbering system. Some of us have specialty sewing machines like a long arm or a high speed machine. There are different num needles for those machines and your owner's manual will tell you what. That'll tell you which needle to use is what I'm trying to say. So this 130 slash 705 might change to something like an HAX1 or an HLX5. Maybe you've seen those. So I'm asking you all from this point to be responsible and know which needle system goes inside of your sewing machines because you may have different machines in the room that use different needles. And if you've been having some odd problems like loops or skip stitches, that could be the resolve. You might have put the wrong needle in the wrong machine, especially if you have a high stitch, high speed machine and you're not running the HLX5 needles in there. Hoping that solves a little bit of confusion and brings us all a little bit smarter about needles. Please again, in the comments below, let me know what questions I didn't really cover for you. I wanted to just bring an overview of what you're really looking at when you're buying needles. You're shopping per project based on the flavor jeans, denim, sharps, quilting, top stitch, embroidery, something like that. And you're also shopping for the amount of scoops you're going to need in your needle. So remember that 80 or that 75 is like a single scoop. It's smaller. That 110 is your triple scoop. It's bigger. And that number 80 and 12 or 90 and 14 are always going to partner up. So don't allow that to throw you off or have you confused as well. Most of us are probably using 40 or 50 weight threads. So the size 80 or the size 90 needles are going to be super appropriate for most everything we're doing out there. Keep track of the needles that you're using and notice the benefits of using the right needle for the job. It's awesome. And make sure you check out the needle chart and download that app from Schmetz. It will really help you when you're standing in your local quilt shop trying to choose which needle you want to use for your newest project. Really hope that helps bring a little bit of sense. Like I said, sign up for one of Rhonda's needle classes. And until then, we will see you right here learning great stuff. And please stay well. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. It really helps support our channel. If you haven't subscribed, do so now. Hit the little button to be notified every time we go live or do a new video for all of you. And here's one from the past I think you'll really enjoy.